Hi everyone, how are you? Hope all is well. I'm going to fix this in just a second. I hope everyone is well. It's so exciting to see everyone on. Hi. Oh, goodness. I hope everyone is doing well. It's so good to see everyone on. We are back. So this is super, super exciting. So I'm just trying to navigate through this a little bit with you guys. So you'll have to excuse me here. So, once again, it is nice to see everyone. My name is Christopher Daring. I am the Creative Color Director with Milbon USA. And I am back here with you guys so that we can do some cutting um, techniques with our global creative director. And we are so, so excited. So I am going to keep a lookout here and we shall get started very, very shortly. Uh, I hope everyone is safe. Um, if, they're wor if you're working, that's great. If you're at home, um, that's good too. But we are thinking of everyone and hope everyone is having a really, really good day. Okay, so hang on for a second, you guys. Okay. All right, so let's see. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi. My head is cut off. I, look, it's okay. Look, we're all adjusting to these new things. <laughs> I miss you guys. I miss being on live. It's been oh. a very long time. I know, I know, I know. It is so crazy. I can't believe that we've kind of gone this long without doing something. But, um, you know, we, we understand that, you know, it happens and we're, we're in a time and we're rolling with the punches. So, yes. how have you been? I've been good for the most part. Just like, again, just rethinking about everything and what I do, who I am. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> what I like to do. So it just reconfirmed that I love doing hair no matter what. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's gonna, it's, is it, this is it. I'm not gonna be a yes. florist. I'm not gonna be an architect. <laughs> what else I wanna be? A dancer, none of that stuff, no. Listen, we can make that happen. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't dance. <laughs> I'm so into K-pop lately. I'm just like, I'm trying to like m match that move. It's just, it's pretty insane. Love K-pop. <laughs> My guilty pleasure. You look great, Christopher. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, it's it's good. We're kind of getting back into the swing of things, and um, you know, just kind of figuring out our way. You know, it's just been just interesting. You know, so. I think we're all in good head spaces. I'm, I'm just excited to be able to kind of get back to what we do, you know? So it's like, anytime we get to share, this is like a great opportunity, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Hi, everyone. So if you're just tuning in, we got on on. Um, and so we're hoping that we're going to get to see um, a little bit of technique today and maybe just kind of get to talk and just kind of catch up with everyone. And I hope that that's okay with everyone. Why yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. So we won't make them wait too long. But um, so, yeah, so um, let's get right into it. So what are we, um, what are we showing today? <laughs> well... I mean, I know some states are going back to work already. I think most states are going back to work already. I have not gone back to work, <laughs> except little house calls yeah. here and there. But other than that, like, I haven't gone back to the salon. Um, but I just feel like I've been seeing so many fringe, and actually a lot of my clients have been asking mm -hmm. for fringe or bangs. Yeah. And I think why not show you guys that 
does a, you know, does a type of fringe I like to do that's very soft and then it's not so much commitment, you know, and yeah. a little bit of commitment, but once it grows, it yeah. grows out really nicely and you can like wear it so, new, so many different ways. So mm -hmm. that's why I want to do, it's almost like a refresh, you know? Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is like, I was with uh, my good client yesterday and she was so, in, it's, she's so awesome. And she's so um, inspirational in a sense of like a spiritualness to it. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. you know, hair, yes, it can be very surface. It can be very like, you know, um, superficial in a way. It's like, yeah, you make yeah. someone pretty from the outside, but there's a way that I guess when you do as a person, if you have good feeling inside, when you eliminate that into hair and you eliminate that into your clients, you transferring energy. So it's really cool. Like I'm learning a lot about this stuff, which, cause I really want to take it to the next level. Cause I just don't want to just do sure. hair. I yeah. want to do other things besides hair. And that's what we're in this process because of this reason. And, and like, yeah. you know, that we need to look into inward to other things and who we are as a person. So it's really, really interesting. So. Yeah. I love that. No, Me I too. think it, it's exciting. I mean, the one thing I will say about this whole thing and this whole journey is just that, you know, I feel like it does make us look a little bit deeper into what we do. And it kind of just, you know, I think it re-solidifies for a lot of us why we're in the industry um, exactly. and why we're doing what we're doing. So I, I think that that's just really great to kind of just piggyback off what you were saying. Um, so yeah, so I think that it's really, really exciting for sure. Yeah, cool. yeah. All right, cool. So, so we'll get into without it. Without further ado. <laughs> um, so this, wait, what's, what's her name? Who is she? Who is she? This is Josephine. <laughs> so Josephine have no bangs, no nothing. Okay. I basically just gave her um, curved layers all the way through. So there's a lot of body and a lot of movement in this haircut, which you guys gonna see once I curl the hair um, and, and show you guys the different techniques of um, curling. Um, but cool. I feel like she's missing bangs, fringe. So I really wanna put that in and not blend the sides. So just basically having a soft and kind of cut off and then drop. Um, okay. Because a lot of times I tend to blend it, um, mm -hmm. you know, just something a little bit different where it's like, I really want the bangs and the fringe to be really pronounced and not blend it to the rest of the hair. So it's just something a little bit different than what I usually do. Cool. I love yeah. That. All right. Yay. All right. So for that ado, I'm going to wheel her up. Dun, dun, dun. It's, it's kind of sad I'm getting used to like working this too much. <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't too, too good bad. with the doll head stand, but um, it's so nice to see your face. I know. I know we see each other on Instagram, but still, just like it's nice it's to see, different. you know, you guys. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. I'm trying not to get a double chin. Ooh, stick my shoulder. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So there we have it. She has no face framing, no nothing. It's very shaggy. Um, there is a type of technique that I like to do, especially with bangs. It's just so easy and, and, and um, it works really well with all types of hair and it grows out really well. And I, I like how it frames the face, you know, without doing so many tricks. Like I'm not gonna twist it around like eight times and then cut it. So I'm just gonna pull it. <laughs> I just want it to be simple, like make it simple, just easy. You know, it's just hair. It is what it is. If you know, so yeah. All right. So usually, if you look at someone's head shape, so a lot of times when the head slope down like this, you can see how most of the hair when it slopes down, that's when the hair falls forward. So from that point, you want to create. Uh, the reason why you want to you want to do that is because a lot of times when you do bangs or fringe, we either pull too much for or too less, and then the hair either fall forward or fall to the side. So yep. this helps, you know, um, that it just falls forward and it's, it is what it is, and you just take it from there. So a lot of times you can just look at it and see how it's slow. But tricky if someone doesn't have a forehead and they want bangs, because you have to go further back. 
So yes, <laughs> that's a whole different story. <laughs> and, and that's possible. Someone can have bangs without forehead, little forehead, not without forehead. Yeah. But that means you have to go for the back to accentuate the head shape. So um, <laughs> luckily she has a little bit forehead, so it's nice. Um, so from that point on, I'm going to take two diagonal sections that ends up to the end of the eyebrows. So from that, and that's just like a general rule of thumb, especially when it comes to someone's head shape, you know, you can take it, obviously, if you want less, you take it less. It's just whatever you land here, 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 whatever the eyebrows that you land it, make sure you land on the other side. But make sure the eyebrows are even. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's another tricky part. <laughs> another thing, yeah. If you had eyebrows, you could be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little tricky. But, you know, that's fun. It makes it fun. If every, everyone looks like a doll head, it would be so boring. So it would be so easy. All right. I'm just going to take, uh, just. That much off just to make sure that I'm even on both sides and then I'm going to turn her around and then do the same on this side okay and if you guys have any questions please feel free to ask yes I will try to help navigate those questions too so you okay can get sounds good for sure and again I don't recommend this at home just unless you're a hairdresser and you you know we know what we're doing so I'm going to use the phone as a mirror because I have no mirror in front. All right. I think she's pretty somewhat even. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, cool. Very cool. I'm going to lower this a little bit. So I'm going to have her head up straight like this. Okay. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm just like, dun, dun, dun. there you go. You guys don't need to see my face. You guys <laughs> <to> see this. <laughs> now, um, how long does it take you on average to do a haircut? Like, to complete haircut start to finish, usually. Uh, without styling? Yeah, without styling. Like, if I don't talk and I don't get distracted and I'm like, sometimes I get really chatty, like Kathy, like a super <laughs> chatty. Cause just because I haven't seen them forever and they like asking me about a lot of interesting thing. Um, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Okay. Because I usually cut dry. So when, it's, when I cut dry, everything is already blown out. And, and, and the reason why I like to cut dry because I can see what I'm doing. Um, okay. And of course, I, you know, if there's a new client, I like to see them beforehand, you know, with the hairline situation, they can have like calyx here and there. Um, right. All that's important. But after that, after they're blown out, and usually my assistant blows them out, um, I just go in and cut. And it takes about like 10, no, not 10, 15 to 20 minutes at max. Okay. But if I don't talk too much. And if I talk too much, my assistant's like this. And, I just, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. That means let's get going. <laughs> like now. <laughs> See, I talk too much. All right. I love chatting. I love chatting with you. I miss chatting with people. Okay. All right, so you pull this out. And I know it's a lot of hair to hold, but if you can, you can hold all of it. If you don't want, if you don't, if you can't, just split this in half, okay? Like so. And then I'm gonna elevate this at, straight out from the head. I wanna see if you guys can see. Mm, yeah. Like so, okay? And I'll turn her around too. So the reason why it's easy to bring this out straight ahead is because the head is curved. So all you do is just bring this out. But once you bring this out, when it falls, it kind of tapers her face because it's going um, with the hairline. So you're not, you don't have to twist. You don't have to over direct it this way or that way. And also sometimes when we over direct, sometimes we have a habit of over directing too far without no, no, noticing it, you know? And sometimes yeah. you over direct less because you're just in a habit. So this helps to keep everything precise and consistent 
Um, and one thing that's very important to me is like keeping consistent is probably the most complaint that clients have when it comes to hairdressing. It's like, I love what you did the first two times and then the third time, I don't know what happened. You know, yeah. so trying to keep consistent is very, very important. Because we are artists and we have mood swings. So one day we're like, fabulous. The next day we're like, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> and it just like, you know, hinders a little bit. So having a little system and cutting really, really helps it. So, all right. So bring this out. I want to keep about this length. So when it falls into your eyes, it falls into the bridge of the nose. Okay. That'll be my long pieces. And I'm going to point cut this. I point cut pretty much everything mm -hmm. just because I want to take out the length and soften the, the length at the same time. So you're doing two technique at one time, you know, you're not going, you're not cutting up length and going back in and, and, and softening up. So you're just doing two things at one time because I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> and I want to be efficient. <laughs> no, I think I just want to work efficiently. Being efficient yeah. is very important. So I don't have to go back and redo it over and over and over. And I think sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll gut our, our first um, initial um, feeling of the haircut is what we really usually should do, you know. And I think we need to trust our gut more or trust our, our feelings more. So yeah. when it comes to that, it's just very important. All right, so that's done on one side. There she cool. is. She can't see, but it's, it's okay. Very we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get her seeing in a minute. But I want it to be more sultry. I want to be more sexy. I don't want to be like, especially when you cut bangs. You're like, oh, so cute. And you're like, yeah. wrong answer. I want <laughs> sexy, sultry in her eyes. I can't see. Let me brush it out my face. Yeah. Fat. <laughs> you know, I don't want cute. Cute is for little girl. That's the way to have it. I'm like, yes. Yeah, I definitely yeah. want it to be sexy and, and soft and beautiful. Yes, sure. yes, and easy to manage because she can push this out to the side. She can even put it up or push to one side or the other side. And I also love versatility because versatility is very important. Yeah. That you can dress it so many different ways. So on this side, we're going to leave it like this. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> we're going to cut this side. <laughs> I'm ready to use some edgy haircuts. <laughs> That'll come. <laughs> that will come. <laughs> Another month lockdown? Yes, that, I'll do some crazy edgy haircuts. <laughs> Extreme mullets. So I'm going to take a guy from the other side like this, like so. And then again, I'm going to pull this out. I'm actually going to turn it this way so you guys can see. I'm going to be as... Oh, that's great. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. You tell me. One day I'll be a hologram and you guys can see through me. That'd be so amazing. All right. Again, bring this out. And then, there you go. I want to point cut this. Okay. And usually when I point cut, I don't go in and jab in it so much just because. I feel like, one, I would definitely cut my finger because I drink too much coffee. And two, um, I think we need to rethink about point cutting because sometimes we just point cut to point cut. And I, I know I'm a, sounds like a nerd when it comes to like haircuts, but sometimes maybe point cut for purpose. So let's say if you need to bring out some lightness in this area where it's dark, where it's really heavy and bulky, you can go in and place it. You don't have to do this part because this part is probably light and, and, and airy. You don't have to go back in and point cut that, you know? So point cut with a purpose, right? you know? I know it sounds yeah. really silly and it sounds like, okay, well, duh, you know? But I think sometimes we just go and go blah, 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 and just like point cut everything. And then I'm like, okay, well, this part's too thin now. <laughs> and this is still heavy. So the heaviness is here. We need to go back in and point cut this, not this part was thin. Um, so, I, you know, maybe food for thought. 
Is that right? Food for thought? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. that's right. For sure. I'm hungry, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Always hungry. Okay. Um, again, just really want to soften this up. And I allow myself, when I do point cut, I allow myself enough room. So I'm not really edging it to like the very end where I'm like nibbling and just a little, very, little bit. Because at that point, you might as well cut a blunt line because you're just barely doing that. And the chances of cutting your fingers are very high. <laughs> no, no blood drawn here. <laughs> so again, and then if I really want to go in more, allow myself more room and then do deep four point cutting. And that really released the weight. And I feel like when you do point cutting, it's, just, it's more like a gentle way of creating texture. Because yes, we can go in and back cut it to give it texture if that client needs it. If someone has really f Asian, like silky hair, that if when you do this, it's just like lays like this, you can yeah. go in and nibble on the end and just create some texture. Only that texture needs it. She obviously don't need it because when I do that, she, her hair is already crazy. So yeah. she has wave to it. So if she doesn't need it, she has really good texture to it. Um, so when you point cut in, it's the softest way to create texture and it's more gentle. It doesn't rub up the cuticle and it creates a lot of movement. Okay, let me cross check this. Make sure she's, I'm pretty sure she's a little uneven because I'm just going. Okay. Uh, now, when you do cross check, do you go in the same way that you, uh, the same way that you cut? Yes. Or do you change? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot has to do with visual, obviously, because it's in the front of her face. And then sometimes, even though we cut the same, again, you know, face shape are different. We're not, we're not born symmetrical. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys ever done this um, um, experiment where if you split your face in half and you paste the right side to the other side, right? It just mm -hmm. looks weird. Because you're too <laughs> even. I bet, yeah. It looks yeah. weird. It looks like it just doesn't look right. But because our face is not even. So yeah. when you do that, it just looks strange. Um, but yeah, try that one day. If, you, if you're bored, if you have time. <laughs> we, had a great, we had a great comment in here that said, uh, let's run a drive-in theater and have on do a cutting class. You could totally a drive-in theater. <gasps> <laughs> I think that's amazing. <laughs> I'm like everyone, just stay in the car. <laughs> I like that. that but how are you going to see me? Well, I well you. Would, oh, I mean, the big screen. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I apparently have not been in a drive-in a very long time. <laughs> Ever since I was a young young boy, um, we did have drive-in when I was growing up. <laughs> that's how old I am. Um, I don't remember anymore, <laughs> but yeah, we should do that. Melbourne, oh, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> what city? That's, that's another question. <laughs> well, it could, maybe it's like a, it's somewhere where you don't have to move. We, everyone just has to go to their drive, their local drive-in. <laughs> oh, like a virtual drive through Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm game. You know, for I'm sure. game for virtualness. <laughs> great, great one. Let's talk about it in our meeting. <laughs> uh, so it's not done um, because a lot of times we do this and it's really heavy. It's unless you want it heavy, unless someone have that hair that tends to lift up, leave it heavy, th mm -hmm. then it's done. But in her case, I want some movement up here. So I want to elevate this up. I'm going to take about uh, a triangle section here because I only want this part to elevate up and soften up. Um, but I want the heaviness still down here because if I lift everything up, everything will be very feathery, which is another look too, which is fine. But in her case, I want to take a triangle from here and then lift up, okay? And it's very simple. So just like this. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Like that. Can you all see? That's great. Yeah. 
for sure. I'm going back to my roots. Yaw. <laughs> I'm from Texas. I am. I'm from Austin originally. All right. So I'm going to bring this up like so. And then this is what it looks like in the back. This is what it looks like in the front. I'll scoot up more. Can you see the little, um, basic little corner right here? Yep. So I'm just going to soft that corner. And again, I'm going to go in and place my point cuts. Okay. I'm not just going in randomly cut it. I'm just like point cut a certain area. Obviously I want to cut point cut this area more because I really, because it's, it's heavier and it's darker. So when you do that, the shorter pieces ends up around here and then the longer pieces ends up here. So you can push the hair easy off to the side or you can push it off to the side on this way. It's um, a lot easier to manipulate once it has internal movement. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much done with the fringe. And I, I have to say, I do, once I do this to my clients, they're like, well, on in a week, it'd be long. We <laughs> always argue. It's always like twisting my arm and I'm like, oh, fine. So if that's the case, that, if that's, if, if you, uh, if, and then also if they live far away, I get it. So in that case, I would take this piece from basically the middle of the eyebrows. I'll take that, that part shorter. So therefore, it will shrink up a little more and then it pushes these hair out, okay? That's what I would do if they're like complaining how long it is and it's in their eyes. Yeah. Um, I get it, which I do get it. Um, but I'm not gonna do it here because I really want her to be more sultry and um, sexy. <clears throat> and so that's pretty much it with the bangs. And it's like a refresh look on Josephine. <laughs> you know, I have to say one of my favorite look and one of my favorite um, um, bang situation is, um, what is it, Scarface? What's her name? Oh, I haven't seen that. The actress, Scarface. Michelle Pfeiffer? Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, yeah. Bangs, oh, strong, so good. Oh, just so, so beautiful. Good. Yeah. So beautiful, I love that, I love, love, love that. So I want to do that. I, I'm not going to blend this part in because I really want this to like bring, I want the corner and the emphasis to be here. Because if you do soften this, and some, most of the time I do soften it, it depends on the person's face. If I do soften it, it tends to draw out this part. So if you don't soften it, it brings out the cheekbones really pronounced. It's just like, bam, cheekbones, you know? So, and she has a good cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. And the rest of the hair, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to put some waves in her hair, okay? okay cool. And I think I've been watching a lot of 70s movies and I really feel like it has such a big influence on what I want to do. Coming back to salon and I feel like it's a very wearable hair, um, either style or not style. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of inspiration drawn from, from all of this. So it's a good thing for sure. Um, I'm gonna be using an inch and a quarter, Marcel iron. And I love Marcel iron so much because I feel like it's very, uh, it's a tool that you can use it in so many different ways. And also you can put in a, a good amount of like pressure or not to a certain um, curls, you know, because it has, so many different variables that move. Yes, very tricky to learn at first um, because there's a certain way you can hold it. And what I learned is that if you hold it this way for me, it works really well. If you have two fingers here and then two fingers in the back. Oh, oh, excuse me. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're doing this together. Okay, like so. Um, it just helps to hold it certain, like it just easier to, um, hold it because sometimes you hold it like this and you have to like really stuck it in and you know obviously if you're practicing turn this thing off because if it falls you'll burn your hands or your arms and not fun yeah. um so two fingers your what is this um, Anna? 
Point pointer and index. In, in, index. Oh, pointer and index? No, this? index right. or pointer. Oh, sorry. Pointer <laughs> index. is index. <laughs> and what is this middle finger? Middle. <laughs> okay. You just middle finger. Okay. And then. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> got it. Yes, we're there. We're here. Okay, index finger, <laughs> middle finger, and then ring finger yep. goes um, underneath it, and pinky. Okay, and when you clamp down, it's just so much easier to have that control, you know, because you're not doing this. You can do this too, because it's, but it's a lot of like work on your wrist. So you just, it's easy to do this. And then when you turn, you close everything. You take these two fingers out and then just like put on top and then rotate. Okay. And then you want to rotate the other side. And it's good to rotate because when you curl, you want to do the live in wave. It's a great way to rotate. Okay. And then when you stop, you go stick these two fingers back in like so. And when I was, <laughs> I was telling my sister like, Hey, you guys don't want to get really agile with your fingers. You know, those, I don't know, those Chinese medicine balls that you get in Chinatown. They're really good for your hands. Yeah. yeah Cause it gives your hand a lot more ag agileness to it. So it just makes it easier and, um, so you don't get like cup of tunnel and stuff like that. So not yeah. a, not a fun thing. So yeah, that's why I would do. And I always sound like if you're watching a movie or doing, doing something, just take it with you and do this backwards and forward. Then you get very familiar with it. So when you do move it around, it's a lot easier. Um, but sure. once you have this down, I love this so much more and I'm a lot quicker with this than with the regular curling iron. You know, mm. and there's a lot more control as far as pressure goes with the curls and the waves. Um, but today we're going to give her a lot more texture and body to her okay. um, hair. So I want to do a combination of different waves. Okay. Oh, cool. And the reason why I like to use this versus using this and then picking up a flat iron is because one, it takes too much time to like set this down, pick up a flat iron. Set the flower now, picking up the current yeah. iron, setting this down. Yeah, it's just too much. I, I like simplicity. I like something easy and efficient. So that's why we came up with like two different techniques to like to give the hair a little more texture. So one technique is, uh, I, I, I call it the live in, I mean the new wave, but this wave has been in for, for a very long time. Like everyone knows it, but I just like to, call it that way because if I were to call certain things a certain way, it just helps my client to call it that. So therefore, same language. So when, when you yeah. put a name on something, you're like, oh, so the clients will be like, just like how you go to McDonald's. <laughs> you're like, I want a Big Mac. Instead of like, I want a hamburger. I'm like, okay, which hamburger? <laughs> which hamburger yeah. do you want? Do you want a Big Mac name to it? It's a Big Mac, <laughs> you know? So when yeah, you have a name to your certain curls, it makes it easier. They're like, oh, I want lived in waves today. I'm like, okay, cool. I want new waves today. Like, it just, you're just educating your clients. And also at the same time, you're branding yourself. So it's, it's really, you know, win-win situation. So anywho, we're gonna start off with the clip going, um, placing down, okay? okay? Because I don't want any crease. Having that crease is really hard to come uh, to unpress. Yeah. So that part goes down first. And then I'm going to turn the clip to the side. Okay. And therefore, because if I were to turn it backwards, there will be indentation. So I don't want any kind of indentation to it. And then I'll flip it to this side. And I want to move her up because y'all can't see. <laughs> there you go. Well, her hair is long. <laughs> huh? Her hair yes. is long. Yeah. Very long. Very long for quarantine. <laughs> it's so interesting. I see my clients some, like here and now, and I'm like, oh my God, their hair is so long and healthy, <laughs> which is a good thing because they're yeah. not 
they're not abusing it by heating the hair up and all these things. So it's nice, you know? The break so is that's good. done. Yeah, that's beautiful. She's, she's waved out. So that takes, that takes like how long? Like five, 10 seconds, I guess? Yeah, not <laughs> even. <clears throat> Yeah. And then, so, so my next one is going to be the lid then. So I like to do combination of both because when you do shake it out or when you finish the hair, it gives it a lot of good texture. So this is where the turning is important. That's why it's good to turn. Okay. And then after you that section, you're going to move on to the top and keep on moving up to the top. And I like to start in the front because I think client likes to see it being done to them. You know, yeah. if you start in the back, they're like wondering what you're doing in the back. And <laughs> <laughs> for those clients who are like really controlling, they're like, what, what's going on? They turn and I'm like, no. So just in the front, <laughs> set it, <clears throat> and then go to the back. So like so. And then I'm clipping, and I'm cl not clipping, I'm clicking because I want, the heat to like be on and off, on and off. I'm not going in and clamping it because once you clamp it, it just has too much of like a, a definite wave to it. So when you click yeah. it, it just creates a softer bend to the hair. And so whatever I'm, I'm seeing underneath here, the yeah. next one gonna be the other types of waves. Okay. okay? So I'm mixing it up new and lid oh wait sorry there you go perfect like so yeah it's so pretty so soft it's it's fun and i i you know sometimes i get bored of doing this but like that's one thing that clients always ask for because it's just something that they can wear on a daily basis. And I think we forget that sometimes we do this so often. They don't do it often. They only see us like how often, like maybe every two months the most or every three months or four months the most. So they're like, they get excited and they're like, I haven't talked to you. They want to do all these things. And you're like, been there, done that. And I think we just have to remind ourselves like, Hey, they haven't seen us and, you know, and they haven't got this done to their hair because it's hard to do this on themselves. Yeah. It's really hard. And I try and I have burned my neck. <laughs> that is true. And, yeah. And it's not fun. <laughs> and it looks like a big picky. So, and I still have a scar from it. So it's, it's fine. So now I'm going to move on to the other side. Okay, like so. Hey, there she is. She's looking hot. Love it. So if I, and usually at this time, and when it comes to salon work, I usually have an assistant with me who does the back, and I do the front, and therefore we can wrap things up really quickly, you know? Um, yeah. But also, this is a really good exercise for your arm. Mm -hmm. You get really buff arm on just on one side, though. <laughs> so you're like Popeye one side, and the other side, you're like super skinny. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Someone out there is ambidextrous. They could do it with both hands. Just oh, like, gosh. That's incredible. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I don't know who, we are, who can, though. I haven't met anyone. I can't wait to meet that person. <laughs> we should clone them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll take two, please. Yes. Just hire those people from the salon. It's done. So I'm just repeating the same um, pattern all the way through in the back, uh, into the top part. And as you guys can tell, these layers are quite short because I gave her a little bit of a, a modern shag. And, you know, shags are fun because I think it has a lot of sex appeal and it creates a lot of volume. And 
if the hair permits, it's really great because some hair, if you cut the too much short of the layers, it would be too um, poofy. But on certain hair, you can cut it. the right amount of layers. It's just so nice. It has a good bounce to it, and it feels really summery. You know, we are going into the summer. I think we are. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we're yeah, we're there. We're we're there we're, now. We're gloomy here today. <laughs> we've had lots of we've had stormy weather here today, so it's been oh the prettiest, but that's all right. We're getting closer to the weekend, so that's good. Yes, yes. So I'm just finishing off this top part right here. Oh, and my temperature is about, in her case, it's about 420, about. You know, it depends on like the type of hair that you have. I usually don't keep it over than that, or, uh, higher than that. And yeah. especially when it comes to curling irons, just be really careful when you first do there that when you haven't used it, it gets really hot. So I usually start, this is a really good tip too. So I, really, I usually start around like 380 or mm -hmm. 390. And then once I start doing the hair and I'm, I'm working with it, I turn up the heat because okay. um, these are not digital, these are analog. Um, analog. So when it, being used, it cools down. So you got to turn up the heat a little higher. And that's the difference between something electronic, uh, electric and something that's not. So back here, I'm going to alternate between lived in and new. So I'm going to do my first one. Uh, new. I'm just like clicking, clicking, clicking. Someone asked me once, how many clicks do you do? I'm like, I guess it depends. <laughs> it depends on the hair texture. Um, usually five. If I count to five, I'm like one, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, I guess I guess that would be it. And Josephine here has some previous products in her hair. Uh, I think she has the dry texture spray. So she definitely, you know, it's a good hold to it. And that has to say with the dry texture spray, a lot of times when you have a certain type of like um, dry texture spray, when you do do that, it comes in clumps, but it, the Melbourne texture spray doesn't, it's just very soft. So it doesn't, it doesn't make the hair shiny because when, when it makes the hair really shiny, that means it's kind of, you know, burning in the hair into the, yeah, the yeah. you know, but this doesn't, I, this has like dry texture spray all over and it's still very movable and very soft. And, and I have to say one of the, the key important thing when it comes to the dry texture spray that the powder is invisible, right? It's an invisible yeah. powder. So it's a clear powder basically. So it's fantastic for brunette hair. Because a lot of times I use dry texture spray on certain type of hair, especially on brunette hair, you can see like white powder, and it's yeah. like then you have to like massage it in, you have to like really like work <laughs> it into her hair so she won't see it. Yeah, uh, and it's because probably you didn't shake it up too well. That's why it, it happens. But with the Melbourne one, it's a clear um, powder, so it comes off really transparent. So I'm it's finishing up, turning this baby up a little higher, so I can go a little quicker. So we're pretty much done. Like the back, I'm almost done. I'm getting a workout, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christopher, um, I have to tell you something. So I've been working out. I bought, I bought like dumbbells and everything. Oh, so. That's good. Yeah, good and bad though. I'll tell you what, what's the bad part? So I was trying on my Saint Laurent stuff, you know, just very tight yeah. and very slimming. Yeah. It doesn't fit. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't fit. <laughs> well, there are good parts of 
parts to that and, and some bad parts, but I'd say the good part of that means is that you can go shopping at some point. So there's good parts. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> So I'm wearing a lot of loose clothes. And it's nice, I love loose clothes. It's so comfortable. <laughs> and sometimes when we put on tight clothes, we're like, ooh, how did I wear this back in the days? It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm, that's, listen, that's, I'm right there with you, it's all good. The funny thing, funny thing. So um, as, you, as you guys can see, I'm alternating it. It's, I love, I love the, the way it looks before, even before you break it up. Um, and sometimes, you know, you don't think it'll blend in nicely just because one wave is like sitting in a certain way and then another wave is sitting another, you know, tight. Yeah. It's just, it's really cool once you break it up. So again, if I'm doing new on the bottom, the top I wanna do, lived in so therefore when you break it up it has a lot of different texture and i actually like working with the texture spray in it yeah it has memory so sure. it's really cool all right so last section here i'm going to separate this part into more like triangle triangles because i don't want it to be lines into the hair or where it splits and especially when someone has like um cowlicks back here yeah okay thank you and then this one is lit uh new underneath so i'm gonna do lifted so it really depends on what you do it's not like that's what's underneath um you just have to switch it up as far as when it goes to what's underneath and what's on the side. Um, and that's where the creativeness comes in and where the customization comes in too. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this one new. So. I have a question for you. Um, if you're working yes. on a client who let's say is wearing extensions and they have a shorter layer and you're doing this type of look on them, um, what what would you suggest for when you're trying to basically blend your waves from the natural hair to the extension hair? You know, good like question. You, yeah. Really good question. I have an answer for that. Because <laughs> we do have a lot of nice conversations. <laughs> so when it comes to that point, um, let's just say that someone has, you know, when it's straight, it looks blended. But when you do hold it out, you can tell from extension and, and hair. So a lot of times I do curl the hair a certain way, like very soft, um, or maybe a little bit um, longer so it holds. Because it really depends. Certain, certain hair holds more than, with well, the natural hair doesn't hold as much as extension hair. So right. that's, that's, a, that's, a key, that's a really true thing. So when it comes to extension, let's just say this part is extension, then mm -hmm. I would wave this part really softly. And I would okay. separate the hair and the extensions. Okay. And then once that's done, you wave, it, you wave it separately. Then I take another section that would just blend both of them and just like kind of marry it through. Okay. Just like okay. blend it with the heat. So therefore yeah. when she moves, her hair won't move in extension move. I hate, okay. I hate that. I want it to move yeah. all together. <laughs> you know? yeah, and then if it's really different, then I usually go in with the scissor and just like, once the hair's wave, because most of the time they're gonna wear wavy, I'll just go in and take slide cutting techniques like so, and just like blend it. Okay. Just like on the surface, just blend it really softly. Mm -hmm. Not cutting her hair, but you know, leaving her and the extensions here. So let's say the extensions here, her hair here, and it's not blending super well. From that point where it sits, I'll just go in and just soften that. So therefore okay. it has a little smoother transition. So That makes complete sense. And, and also when you do extension, try not to put too much in where her hair is so different and her and the extension is so different, then it's hard to yeah. move. And it gets really like, yeah, 
can be shifty. So, um, all right, let this cool. <clears throat> and gosh, I already put like texture spray on. It's good. I'm gonna make her hair really um, textured, like a lot more um, feathery, like the cool. 70s. Okay, so I wanna put in my favorite. I can't help it. I just, I use it on every one. <laughs> <laughs> the dry texture spray. It's such a good, versatile product that I know I use it on so many people and they're like, do you have anything else? I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> but you know, it depends That's on what so you good. want. <laughs> but this <laughs> is so good. You just buy one and put it into every single room in your car, everywhere, just, just in case you need it. So um, this is the dry texture spray number four. Um, but I seen something from Japan. Oh, it's number seven. Oh, I, I, are we gonna get that? I hope so. So, have, so seven hairspray. No, dry shampoo. Dry. Uh, not dry shampoo. Um, dry texture spray number seven. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. Don't say I mentioned that. Just kidding. We we um, know nothing in these parts. <laughs> I just saw online. Anyways, I was, I was fine. I was Googling things. I'm like, ooh, what's this? You never know but, what you might see. Anywho. <laughs> so I tend to shake it out first. See, I love, yeah. like, see how much texture it is already into the hair? So this is done with the dry texture spray in before. And, and yes, I did her haircut before, and I sprayed it, and I styled it out. But, and then... Um, Amanda blew it out without um, any, um, she didn't shampoo it. So I love the fact that it's, you can rework the iron with the um, dry texture spray and it doesn't get so clumpy. It still gets really fluffy and, 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 and a lot of body to it. So it's really, really great. Um, I'm gonna shake the same out on this side. And then I'm gonna add some products in. And I like to massage it in and just really like so, like she's been rolling around in it and just kind of so living good. in it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's just the more messy, sexier it is. And yes, she's in a rock band, so um, I need to make <laughs> her hair a little high. Um, she's in this like death metal band, just kidding. So another technique I like to do is that I like to pinch the hair. So a lot of times we like spray the hair and just all over. Go in, pinch, hold up, hold up, hold up. There you go, okay. Fingers like this, pinch, spray. So it kind of feels like, it kind of gives that airiness to it, you know? And again, lift, spray. So you can really get into it. Get, I'm gonna get the product into the hair. So good. Like this. Right all over. Love it. Ah. Telling you, the more I stay on the mat, the crazier the hair gets. <laughs> all right. And then. And style this out a little bit more. There you go. Sorry. Uh, love that. Her name is, her name, she's in a band called Heart. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. All right. I just, I just love the volume when it comes to this. You know, of course, along with the haircut and stuff and, and the bangs and the fringe, it's just, it gives that sexiness to it, you know? And it's not too, she doesn't look, I guess she can look cute if she wants to, but now she just looks like she's like ready to rock out or I don't know, <laughs> I'm being so silly. <laughs> but um, you know, a little more edgy. We love a good edgy, okay? I mean, the same. Yeah. God, I wish I had hair like this. I wouldn't wash it for days. Or maybe months. That's a thing. That's a real thing. <laughs> it's so pretty. 
Uh oh. Someone just call me. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Last but not least, I want to put some products in. And um, just just to separate the ends a little bit more, just to like um, give it a little more texture. So I usually have two choices. Oh, shoot. Oops. I don't know why I put the other one. It's the Wave um, Define Cream. It's the other one that I usually put in. I don't know why I put it. Oh, yes. I put it in my house ball bag and it's like, but for this, I really want to use the molding wax, number three, because it gives it a lot more texture to it. Uh, I mean, I gave it to someone. Oh. I, <laughs> my client asked for it. She's like, oh, and I, I don't know where to find these products. I'm like, can you just give it to me? I'm like, if I'm going to give it to you, I'm going to not have any products. And like, I don't have that. Well, yeah, maybe they, maybe they beg. And they're like, please. I'm like, you just order online. And I gave them full information, but they still won't. She still won't let me go. But anyways, she took my Wave Defined Cream. So that has a number one, that has like hold number one, which is like very light and very soft. Um, great for this as well, but I don't, want it, I don't want that for her. I want her to have a little more texture, a little more hold. So I want to use the Molding Wax number three. And like it is it's just it has more of like a waxy feeling to it so it definitely has more hold and a lot more separation to it and there's also different numbers in that um family but in her case i really want to use that i'll probably use about a pea side and put it all over your hands i'm not gonna put it in the back because i don't need it <laughs> um and then all i have to do is just do this to the ends just money, money, money. I was telling one of my students, I was like, just like you counting money, are you? She's like, oh my God, I got it. I'm like, okay. And I, <laughs> not, I'm <laughs> it makes me uh, sorry. Right? Yeah, look at this. So fun. I love it. Again, you guys don't have to make it looking this crazy, but I dig this so much because it's so much fun. Um, again, you yeah. guys seen all my other work. It's like you can be really soft um, and don't have to be this wild and crazy. But this is fun, you know. This is this is what the texture can do when it comes to like putting wa new wave and then um, lived in wave together. Mm -hmm. For and sure, the French just a refresh. Love it. You like it? Yeah, Josephine likes it too. <laughs> Josephine's like this is a refresh. So like with these it. layers are pretty short, so that's why they, they have, she has a lot of like moving up here. Exactly. Totally, for sure. Yeah, she's oh my, my girl. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. You're it's very so welcome. Crazy. Yes, I, I mean, like, time has just flown by. I'm like, oh my God. It's, well, it's <laughs> almost an hour. I know. You know they kick us off of here when it's- I know, <laughs> I know. We go okay, over? well, I want to say thank you. <laughs> I adore you and I miss you. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, we adore you. Thank you so much. You know, on the behalf of Milbon, we appreciate you. Um, we cannot wait to see you in person. We've been trying to figure out when that's going to be, but we're hoping that it's soon. Um, once again, if you need us, we're around. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. You can also um, go back and review this video if you would like. And keep in mind, make sure that you use those fingers. Money, 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 money. Break up that hair. <laughs> these, this is, these are hearts. I, I know, right? It's how we make everything work. So, you know, it's <laughs> one of those things. But we love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you again, An. We really appreciate oh it. Oh, my God. Thank you, Christopher. I uh, love you guys. Bye.